Good morning. Um, hi, my name is uh, Ben Moss, for you people that don't know me or don't recognise me with this mop of hair. But uh, I am joining you today um, from on Portland on the beautiful weather on this beautiful isle. Um, and over this last um, month or so, over this last Lent season, we've been uh, looking at what did Jesus do in many different parts of his ministry. And this uh, is an exciting time um, in the ministry. This is an exciting scripture where we get to see a little bit more uh, kind of behind the curtain. Uh, we see a little bit about uh, Jesus's purpose being um, outworked and actually we get to see um, some real uh, kind of practical um, things that Jesus uh, shows us about how we can follow in his footsteps. So uh, before we do anything else, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for uh, this place. We thank you for everything that you have gifted to us. Lord, we thank you for your... Uh, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. Lord, we are looking to Easter, uh, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, where we are reminded of that amazing sacrifice that you made that allows us to have communion with you to have contact with you and for you to be able to reach into our lives and intimately shape us um, and transform us into uh, your likeness father speak to us and give us the uh, uh, grace and courage to respond to what it is that you want to say to us this morning for your glory and in your name we pray amen so the passage of scripture uh, we're going to look at is from John, and we'll, uh, we'll look at that now. So uh, the scripture that we're reading is from uh, John's Gospel, and it's chapter 12, uh, and it's verse uh, 20 through to verse 33. Um, so I'm reading from the NIV, uh, if you want to read along with me, um, but it says this. Now... There were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. So Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it produces, uh, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, and while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also or also will be. My father will honour the one who serves me. Now, my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there heard it and said that it had thundered. Others said that a, an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for the judgment of this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death that he was going to die. Father, bless this reading to our understanding. So we're going to uh, look into that scripture uh, again. Uh, we're going to look into that scripture in a, in a, in a short while. But uh, before we do, um, we have the opportunity to um, align our hearts uh, with God, that we can spend a bit of time worshipping him in his presence. Uh, and this song has a, a, a beautiful journey in it. It says, I want to walk with Jesus Christ all the days I live on this life on earth. And it talks about, I want to learn to speak to him. I want to learn to hear from him. I want to learn 
uh, to read his words. Um, and uh, it finishes with this Holy Spirit, um, enter now into this heart of mine. Um, so let's let's sing through this. If you know the words, uh, feel free to sing along. Um, if not, then just uh, spend a bit of time just listening and enjoying um, this time of worship with God. I want to walk with Jesus Christ all the days I live on this life on earth to give to him complete control of body and of soul. Follow him, follow him, yield your life to him. He has conquered death, he is king of kings. Accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him. I want to learn to speak to him, to pray to him, confess my sin, to open my eyes and let him in, for joy will then be mine. Follow him, follow him, yield your life to him, he has conquered death, he is king of kings, accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him. I want to learn to speak of him, my life must show that he lives in me. My deeds, my thoughts, my words must speak of all his love for me. Follow him, follow him, yield your life to him, he has conquered death, he is king of kings. Accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him. I want to learn to read his words, for this is how I know the way to live my life as pleases him in holiness and joy. Follow him, follow him, yield your life to him. He has conquered death, he is king of kings. Accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him. O Holy Spirit of the Lord, enter now into this heart of mine. Take full control of my selfish will and make me wholly thine. Follow him, follow him, yield your life. To him he has conquered death, he is king of kings. Accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Follow him, follow him, yield your life to him. He has conquered death, he is king of kings. Accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him.
Yeah, Father God, we worship you. Lord, we want to follow you. We have decided to follow you and may we yield our full life to your control. And Holy Spirit, make us truly thine, yours, that we may speak of you and that we may know how to live to please you. We may hear your voice. And as we continue uh, this reflection, may we hear your voice and allow you to take control of our selfish will and be truly yours. Amen. Yeah, so um, we... Uh, I want to start off uh, with this image of uh, the seed, uh, where Jesus says um, that a grain of seed, um, unless a kernel of wheat uh, falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. I want you to to get an apple. I'm saying an apple because an apple is particularly uh, precious um, to, uh, to to me uh, and to uh, my daughter because we did this uh, about six months ago. So I want you to get an apple. And I want you to slice the apple in half or in, in thirds. Just get to the core of the apple and then take one of those seeds out. I'll give you a, 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 a minute or a couple of seconds to get that. Um, and, and see if you can and grab one of those seeds or as many of the seeds as you can grab uh, for now. Um, and we'll use that as a little illustration. So I'll just give you a second. Um, to grab those things and see if we can get an apple apple seed um, for this part. Uh, so I'm assuming either you have an apple seed uh, in your hand or you or at least imagining what an apple seed looks like. So the apple seed, you can see how small it is. It's a tiny little black seed and, and inside that seed has so much potential. Jesus uses this analogy of unless this kernel of, of wheat uh, falls to the ground, it remains a single seed. And inside that seed, so um, that last last autumn, I think, um, Evie and I decided we wanted to try this and we wanted to uh, plant a tree. So we cut open an apple and we had the apple seed and we talked about the apple seed and that this could potentially become a tree. Um, and we planted it and we planted a bunch of them and they have grown. Um, they're still alive, which we're very excited about. But these, these, these little seeds hold so much potential inside them. They're just these tiny little dormant seeds that remain dormant until they're planted in the ground and provided with uh, water and moisture, heat, um, and whatever the other things that they need to kind of initiate the germination process. And then they sprout into these tiny little shoots, which we're very excited about. And then they grow into these uh, leafy little plants and seedlings, and then they'll grow and grow and grow into these trees that will be filled with birds and filled with with uh, different insects and they'll produce other apples that will then have seeds within them themselves there's so much life that comes out of such a tiny seed which is why this is such a beautiful picture that Jesus um, is showing he says unless the seed falls to the ground <coughs> it remains a single seed it remains dormant with all that potential stored inside it but still dormant until it's laid aside until that that little part of our life that we have laid dormant that we have not allowed god access to is uh, laid aside and uh, and we um, allow god to to step into our life to bring that that light and that sunshine and that warmth that starts that germination process that brings forth the life that god has for us and that doesn't uh, it's not only contained within ourselves, but it spills out from ourselves to the rest of the world. And we become shade to others. We become um, other uh, uh, points of, of contact for the rest of the world to see God's work within us. The eternal life that comes from knowing God. And not just knowing God, but allowing him to shape us, allowing him to, to bring life to those areas of our life that we um, that remain dormant, that we haven't yet allowed him to have access to. 
And this this point in the story, we have this moment of from from Jesus where he says, um, <clears throat> where he says, "My soul is troubled." There's a there's a moment of of you can see like the fear is there, but the 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 declaration that Jesus makes is no, uh, it is for this time for this reason why I am here, and may you be glorified. And I believe that that is the the call that we are we have. That is the the purpose that we are called to is to glorify God. Every one of those little seeds, when we glorify God with our attitude, we bring out, we die to our old attitudes and we glorify God to those attitudes. And life comes from that. These little tiny areas of our life that seem so insignificant. It could be finances. It could be our job. It could be making the dinner on a Sunday afternoon. It could be any part of our life that we... we have allowed to just become mundane that we can actually say no this let this be something i can glorify god with and so um my prayer for today and i believe that our the the challenge that i have the encouragement that i have for us and the challenge that i have for us is to glorify god and to find those parts of our life to pray that courageous prayer to say, God, where am I holding back? Where are my dormant seeds in my life? And may you be glorified in those areas of my life. It's a courageous prayer to pray. And we're going to have a little bit of time in a second. We'll play a little bit of music and we'll have a bit of time where um, we can have that courageous prayer with God. Where we can pray as Jesus did. You know, where he is, may we want to be. And as Jesus prayed, be glorified. So next week uh, we're going to be talking about the um, the triumphant entry, but we actually get to discuss a little bit about the victorious nature of the cross, the power of the victory in the cross, and how that applies to us um, in our daily life today. Uh, this week, in fact, we heard a little bit about Jesus um, giving us a bit of a teaser um, on that one. So I'm quite excited about digging into that one next week with you guys. So may you have a, a great Sunday. May God speak to you and may God work through you and may God bring life in your life um, in areas where you did not expect it, that we would see God glorified in our lives and through us to the, our surrounding uh, people and community. And may God's kingdom come, may God's will be done in us and through us this week, this month, this year, and this Easter for your glory, we pray.